Hi, and welcome to Sam's Kitchen Chronicles. Today, we're going to make bagels. So here are my ingredients. You're first going to make a dough. One of the main components of dough is simply flour. And of course, you're going to need water. You have salt and yeast because bagels are a sort of bread product. The one other ingredient that makes bagels a little different is the malt. I have here three different kinds I want to show you. Well, really there's two kinds. There's malt syrup and then there's malt powder. Now both of these you can get online. I bought these on Coupon. I'll provide a link for that. Now this, just so that you know, this is called Yakirum Karu. And this is used for making things like chike. And this is not the kind that you want to get. What you want to get is called Mega. This is going to give you that malt flavor that makes bagels so unique. So you can use either one. One caveat about using powder is that though it works well in the dough, because you're going to be kneading it, it doesn't work so well in the water bath. Uh, we're going to go with the malt syrup today. I also want to talk to you about the flour. I'm going to be using King Arthur unbleached bread flour and this is going to be good for our bagels. If you're in Korea and you come across a, a selection of flour, what you'll notice is that you'll see something like chunyeok, angyeok, and also gangyeok. When you're dealing with any sort of bread product, typically you're going to want to go with gangyeok. Gangyeok is just simply bread flour. Chungyeok is you know, middle, so it's all-purpose flour. And pangyeok is dessert flour or cake flour. Uh, so you don't want to be using that. In a pinch, you can use the all-purpose, the chungyeok, but typically you want to go for the gangyeok. Okay, so real quick, flour, water, malt, sugar, salt, yeast. Those are all the ingredients that you need to have bagels. And of course, if you want to top it with some sort of topping like poppy seed or sesame seed, onions, you can do that. Today, I might just go with sesame and or plain. Well, we'll see how I feel as we go along. I'm going to begin by activating the yeast. And in order to do that, I'm going to start with 115 degrees Fahrenheit water. That's just above 40 degrees Celsius. So maybe 41, 42 degrees Celsius. I'm gonna get about a cup and a half of water. But first, I'm just gonna use a cup just so that I have something to work with and then I'll add another half cup later. So I've got my cup of water. I have a thermometer. I'm right at 115. I'm gonna go ahead and use this. I'm gonna put this into a glass. Start with some sugar. I'm just gonna use a tablespoon. Let it dissolve. Now I add my yeast. The sugar's feeding these guys. It's not really there for flavoring or anything. It's there just to help activate the yeast. Now we're gonna wait about five to 10 minutes just until it begins to froth at the top. I'm seeing some bubbling. It looks like it's working. So yeah, while, while, you're, while this is happening, it's, it's good to go like, I don't know, play, play in a round of overcooked or something on your Nintendo Switch or, I don't know. Um, yeah, I'm gonna just pause the video. So now, I'm looking at the yeast and it's getting a little frothy at the top and that's a good sign. So remember we did one cup of water here, so I'm going to add a half cup of water and we're going to do four cups of flour. So let's add some salt. Two teaspoons of salt. Oh, salt everywhere. And then we'll add our water and then another half cup of water. And now we'll go ahead and add our malt. One heaping tablespoon will do. This stuff is really sticky. Sticky, viscous, really thick honey. Look at that. You can just kind of wrap it around your spoon like that. There's always that little thread that, that stays. And you can just mix that in. Okay, once your ingredients are starting to come together, just keep going at it until it turns into dough. Go ahead and get all of that off of your spoon, and then once it's ready, you can start eating it. All right, I think it's ready to, to be worked on my table surface now. Okay, so 
nice piece of dough. It should feel like Play-Doh. I'm gonna drop it into this bowl. That's what it looks like now. In about an hour, really depends on the temperature of your room, but usually in about an hour it'll increase in size, about 1.5 to double uh, its original size. Then you'll know it's ready. I'm gonna take some saran wrap, cover it, and I'll see you in an hour. Okay, it's a couple hours later. I went a little bit longer than I wanted to. I had a little lunch break and everything, but uh, here we are. Let's go ahead and take a look at what our dough looks like now. So you can see how much it's risen. That's after a couple hours. Let's go ahead and get started with the shaping. Okay, so I've got my spatula. I'm just gonna get this dough out onto my surface. So some people will tell you, and this goes for a lot of different bread recipes, uh, to, to punch down your dough. I find that it's not entirely necessary. What you're really doing is you're just giving the, the yeast more space to kind of go out and spread, I guess, throughout the dough. But once you shape it, it kind of takes care of that on its own. So here, I'm gonna get this into a workable lump here. I'm gonna take my dough cutter, cut this in half. I'm gonna make eight, eight bagels with this dough recipe, so we're just gonna divide these in half three times so that we have eight pieces of dough. If you wanna be super exact, you can weigh it on a scale. Today, I'm just gonna eyeball it. Okay, here we are, we got eight pieces of dough. And what you're gonna do now is we're going to shape this into balls. You're gonna roll it, you're gonna press against it with your hand while you're turning it like this. When you do that, it's going to make the surface of it taut and push the, the dough on the outside inward and on the bottom. Oh, mine has a little bubble. I'm gonna pop it. Let me give you a point of view perspective so that you can kind of see what's going on here. What I'm doing, again, is I'm just pushing up into my palm while I'm pressing the sides down like this. I'm using my fingers and the edge of my palm to sort of press it down and using my fingers to press. And as I sort of rotate it like this, you can see how the skin is sort of being pushed under the dough ball. And it becomes more and more like a sphere. There we go. Look at that. What a beaut. Now I'm just gonna arrange these, cover them for a few minutes, and we'll revisit these. So now that we got the, the dough balls resting, we're going to, meanwhile, make our everything bagel seasoning. A little bit of sesame seeds, a little bit of poppy seeds, some garlic flakes, and some of my very coarse sea salt. And you just give that a little, little mix. We're gonna put this on some of our bagels. While this is resting, I'm gonna take some water that I boiled in my electric kettle. I like using this as a trick. It helps make the process a little bit faster. Turn that on. And now is also a good time to preheat our oven. And so we're going to preheat this to 450 Fahrenheit or 230 Celsius. While that's preheating, we're going to get our bath situation ready. Okay, our water bath is ready. It's boiling. I'm gonna add a little bit of my malt syrup, about a heaping tablespoon, into the water bath. It's gonna give that nice sheen that bagels are famous for, along with that malty taste that makes bagels bagels. And we're just about there. All right, I'm gonna show you a few different ways you can shape your bagels. Probably the easiest way to do this is simply to take your dough ball, take your thumb and a finger, and just make a hole. Put both index fingers in and just start rolling the bagel around your finger, like so. Another way to do it, you just roll it out into a rope, take the rope and just wrap it around your hand, that's on that bubble top, and you just close it like that. And that's it. Two ways to roll a bagel. And this first batch is all going to be dipped in our everything bagel seasoning. We're going to roll and Flat. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and drop this into our water bath for about a minute on each side. It's nice to give it a little stir so that it doesn't sink to the bottom and stick. 
Okay, now I'm just gonna flip these. Meanwhile, I'm gonna take my tray, cover it with some parchment paper. Our bagels are now ready to be dumped. I'm gonna take the bagels out. Now one way you can do this is to sprinkle it. And another way to do it is to simply dunk it into the seasoning mixture. I'm gonna do that. It might be a little hot to handle, and that's okay. Dunk it, give it a little mix in there, make sure it's nicely coated, and just put it in the tray. Beautiful. This is gonna go in the oven for 14 minutes. And look at that. That's our first batch of bagels. Now you can see the different variations that I did with these bagels. These over here are obviously with the Everything Bagel Seasoning, uh, minus a few of the ingredients. These here are the plain bagels. You can see how these two are puffed up more than these two. You can see the thickness of this one. This is because, like I showed you earlier, I didn't flatten it. I just kind of let it, let it be as it was, and as a result, it's thicker. You know, sometimes you see bagels in this shape. I prefer the sort of this this sort of bagel. And that's the result of having flattened it out like I did earlier. Something to note is that if you look at the color, it's definitely darker than the plain ones. And the, the reason for that is I baked these at 230 Celsius and I baked these at 220, just to see what would happen. I, I noticed that in the past when I baked my bagels at this temperature, it's a little bit darker than I like. And so I figured I'd give it a try at 220 and this is what came out. It's definitely softer when it first comes out, but it still has that nice bagel sheen. And so really it's a matter of preference. I think if you keep it at 220 and just go a little bit longer than 14 minutes, you can probably get something in between these two colors. So that's something to keep in mind. All right, well let's, let's try breaking into one of these, see what it's like. And there you have it. I hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as I did making it. Please remember to like, subscribe, comment, all that stuff. Uh, I do want to hear your comments. Please let me know what you thought of this video. Let me know if there are any things I could maybe improve on. This is all just something I'm kind of delving into. Definitely open to suggestions, questions, comments, videos you want to see in the future, things you want to see me make things you wanted to know about, getting certain ingredients or working with certain ingredients and recipes here in Korea. I am going to try to do a follow-up video where I prepare some smoked salmon and also, if all things work out, I'm going to try to do a mukbang. So uh, stay tuned for that. Uh, hopefully you can join me as I eat my delicious creation and hopefully I will have inspired you to also try it on your own. I'll see you next time.